crime out of control, out of wedlock birth. Uh, black Americans made a big mistake by electing black politicians only, thinking that somehow or another these politicians are going to look out for them on their behalf. Instead, they've taken advantage of them. Jesse Jackson, for five years we held what we call the National Day of Repudiation of Jesse Jackson. We will hold a big rally every year in front of his Rainbow Push office, L.A., on Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, holiday, birthday, because we wanted to show the contrast between Dr. King's dream and Jesse Jackson's nightmare. Uh, Dr. King said that one day America would be judged by the contents of character. Jackson's nightmare is that we're judged by, due to, by color and not character. Dr. King said that one day we will become the, uh, one nation under God. Jackson's nightmare is that we are more divided today than any other time in history because white Americans have cowered down to him and black Americans have been brainwashed, demoralized, and made to be angry. And when you're angry, it's easy for people to control you. Uh, Jesse Jackson cheated on his wife. Remember that? He made a baby in that relationship. He called himself a reverend. And yet, even today, he can walk into the average black church and get a standing ovation rather than repudiating him. Because the black church is about the color. They're not about the character. They're about the money. They're, they're not about salvation or freeing the people up. And if we continue to sit back and allow Barack Obama to get away with turning our country into a socialist society, we're all going to suffer for it. There is no way else to run. There is no way else to go. Everybody and their mama are trying to get here. I don't see busloads of people trying to get out. Even now, they're having this flu epidemic going around, and they're refusing to close the borders. It doesn't make sense to me. If there's an epidemic coming in from Mexico, why not shut down the borders and take care of the home first, take care of America first? But they won't do it, because by allowing these illegals to come <coughs> in, and then the government take care of them, they're going to become good little Democrats, just like black Americans did. Prior to the civil rights movement, most black people were Republicans because they were independent of the government. They didn't need the government. But once the government became their daddy, they became Democrats. That's how that, that's how that change came about. And so these illegals are coming across the borders, and they are dependent on government, and they are voting for government, liberal government, uh, Democrats, and that's why they won't even close the borders, even now, when we're in this crisis, a uh, health care crisis. One other point I want to make about it is that, then I take some questions. The, um, for the last 20 years or so, the illegals have been coming in, I mean, by the droves. And they end up first in the black communities. They end up in the inner cities. And as a result of that, they are affecting the employment, health care, housing, and education. Hardly a day goes by in Los Angeles where blacks and Hispanics are not fighting within the public school system because the kids are feeling pushed out. They feel that the teachers are paying more attention to the illegals than to the black kids in the school. But yeah, we can't get Maxine Waters or uh, uh, Congresswoman Diane Watson or any of those people to do anything about it because they think in their mind that somehow or another people of color are going to come together and uh, unite and take the power away from the white man. It's all about that than anything else. And crime is out of control as a result of the illegal coming in. They're bringing in drugs. And, and, uh, it is so bad in L.A. that the Crips and the blood, the black gang, join forces to fight against the uh, illegal um, uh, Hispanic gangs. It's out of control. And yet Barack Obama has said he's not going to do anything about it. He's not going to close the borders. And black Americans voted for him thinking that he's going to look out for them. It's not going to happen. And I have to tell you, this is not easy, but we have to do it. You know, I used to be a, a, a liberal Democrat to the core. I think I was born that way. And um, and my values, I had no foundation to stand on. Anything you want to do is fine. You know, you have the right to do whatever you want. But I, I realized at some point that that was the wrong way. So I went to God and asked him to, you know, I apologized to him for being a liberal Democrat. And he forgave me. And I overcame and became a conservative Republican all the way. Because the Republican platform is about family, hard work, God, country, and constitution. Whereas the Democratic platform is not all Democrats, I don't want to imply that, but the Democratic platform is about abortion, government taking care of you, uh, same-sex marriage, a weak military, you know, just whatever you want to do. There are no standards there. And you can't be a 
a man or a woman of God and support those values. And that's why I left the party. I mean, yeah, the Democratic Party. And I want to encourage you. And over the last 10, uh, 12 years, 20 years or so, I've been called every name in the book. I've been called Uncle Tom, a sellout. I've had guns drawn on me. My telephone's been tapped. I have, I've had to take Jesse Jackson to court because he and his son attacked me at a meeting one day. But I'm not afraid of these cowards. I've been called, have you heard the word nigger? Anybody ever heard that word? White people are afraid of that word. <coughs> I have been called nigger by black people so much because that's how they try to intimidate you. I have been called nigger so much, I was thinking about changing my middle name from Jesse Lee to Jesse <laughs> Nigger. I told my staff one day, you know what, I've been called nigger so much, I think I'll just change my middle name. But and they can't get to me with words because I love what's right. I love my country. I often tell them that. I am not an African American. Whenever I open up my radio show, I open up by saying that I am not an African American. I don't have an Afro, I have an Amerifro. There are no African drums beating in my chest. The American guitar is playing in my heart. I am black as the ace of spades. You turn these lights out, you just see white teeth and white eyes. But I am 100% American. This is my country, I was born here. I remember, uh, I grew up in Alabama at a time when they had these signs that says for whites only, for blacks only, we were not allowed to live in certain areas and move out. Um, I went to a movie theater once, and black Americans had to sit in the balcony. We were not allowed to sit downstairs. But the one thing that we had going for ourselves at that time is that we did not rely on the government. We relied on ourselves. Black men and women got married. They helped one another in time of uh, emergency. <laughs> They did not go to the government and ask for help. They stood up for what is right. And they said, don't hate. Don't hate people. Do what's right. Treat people the way that you would like to be treated, and you can succeed in this great country. But black Americans have lost that now because they turned their lives over to uh, the government. And that's what Barack Obama wants to continue. And my concern is because he is a black liberal Democrat, that will happen. And I just want to encourage you to stand up and love what's right, and do what's right. It is not about color, it's about family, it's about values, it's about constitution, it's about our country. And so when they try to intimidate you, just know that they're cowards, they don't love what's right, and don't give in to them, and eventually good will win over evil. But you gotta start standing up for it. You cannot have fear and deal with the folks who are serving evil. And Barack Obama is an evil man. He's not on the side of good, He's a far left liberal socialist. If you notice, he never stopped campaigning. He's still com campaigning as though he's not one. You know, the guy's a coward. He can't even give a speech without having a teleprompter there because he can't think on his feet. He's been guided by someone else. He's a socialist, and we need to be aware of that. And I'm here to warn you, you've got to get over fear and start standing up for what is right and forgive those who hate you because you stand up for what is right. All right, let me tell you some questions for you. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, I think a little bit of what we got to say, and I read from the past article, the views on homosexuality is, in my opinion, a little harsh. And um, in Deuteronomy, for example, it says that brides that are virgins should be stoned. It also says that um, adulterers should be stoned. And there are other, like, Leviticus laws where it talks to against homosexuality. I mean, we that. But it also says that it's an abomination for, you know, they shouldn't want to be stabbed. Um, can't have sex with the woman is, you know, good trade. So, my question is, what gives you the right or any other person to say that homosexuality is bad and we can do this, but we can't do all these other things? Well, you know, first of all, common sense gives me the right to see that it's wrong. And we shouldn't hate the homosexuals, but we should not accept the lifestyle. Because um, even uh, homosexuals are not happy being homosexuals. They are, uh, many of them are alcoholics and drug addicts and you know, they're, I mean, especially they're out of control. They're not happy living that lifestyle. So we, people who are on the side of good, have a responsibility to, a responsibility to reject that. You know, you don't hate them, you don't beat them up, but you just don't accept the lifestyle. Common sense dictates that is wrong. I mean, I mean, without even mentioning the body parts, 
Did you just see that? I mean, it's